being in the house of the Lord, bringing church and worship to your homes, it is a joy, it is an honor, and a privilege, and one that I don't ever take for granted. Hallelujah today. I just feel the joy of the Lord here. The strength of God is here. God empowers us through the worship experience. He releases our weakness and gives us his strength as we yield to him our bodies and souls. And God is just good, good, good. And I thank him so, so much. Amen. God is great. God is great. All right, brothers and sisters. Well, I, I am just yet still full the praise and the worship that has gone on in this house has really elevated me and rejuvenated my spirit. And I just feel like preaching a little while today. God is good. He's worthy of that. He's worthy of my best. I just want to take my hat off to our music ministry as always. You guys are phenomenal. Awesome, awesome, awesome instruments of God. Praise God for you. Thank God for you so, so much. Amen. Reverend Daniels, thank you so much for that awesome prayer. Sister Daniels, amen, is in the house. Good to see y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all so, so much. Great, great godly people. We praise God for them. And uh, to each of the few people, it's just a few of us that are here. Amen. Amen. But God is great, 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 and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Well, I want to call your prayerful attention to the 121st number of Psalms. This is what the Holy Spirit has led me to share from today. 121st number of Psalm. And we'll just read it in its entirety. It's just eight verses. I have the New King James Version of God's Word. And, and media team, hey, you know, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> I switch up. I switch up. I just go how the Spirit directs. And so uh, some, some weeks it's the NASB, some weeks it's the Amplified, some weeks it's it's the Message Bible. Uh, today is the New King James Version. Amen. And so my translation may be slightly different from yours, but ultimately it's the inspired Word of God that we need to hear. Amen. This is what the Word of the Lord says from the New King James Version. Amen. It simply says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. The question, from whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord. Amen who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Verse five, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shame at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil he shall preserve your soul. Verse 8, it concludes by saying, The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen for the reading. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our awesome and amazing God. We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. With the help of the Holy Spirit, as always, I need His Holy Spirit, divine help, His assistance. And with your proud consideration, brothers and sisters, I want to preach a message simply entitled, My Help Comes From the Lord. Amen. My Help Comes From the Lord. Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, has it dawned on you just how awesome it is? to know and fully comprehend that the God of the universe, the same God who reigns, rules, and runs the entire cosmos, pays full attention to you and I. God's eyes are always on us, paying close attention to us, and he's, his desire is to bless our lives, and that desire is actually beyond our desire to be blessed. Consider it part of the fact that whatever blessing you desire, our God wants to do exceedingly and abundantly more than whatever you can ask, even think or imagine. God watches us closer than a mother watches a newborn baby. God watches us closer than an eagle watches his prey. 
The Bible declares in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In our text this morning, Psalm 121 is a psalm that seems to be intended to instill confidence in those making the pilgrimage to Jerusalem to worship. Psalm 121 is a psalm derived from a collection of psalms known as the Songs of the Ascent. Uh, the Songs of the Ascent is a title given to 15 of the psalms beginning at Psalm 120 and ending at Psalm 134. Many scholars believe that the title indicates that these psalms were sung by worshipers as they ascended the road to Jerusalem to attend the three pilgrim festivals, which was the Feast of the Passover, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacle. There were 15 steps that led from the court of the Gentiles to the court of the women at the temple. And all worshipers would transition into their respective areas to begin to make their journey up to the temple. All Jews would come up these 15 steps as they entered into the temple. When I feel led of God to just say right along through here that every time you worship, you need to know that it is a going up experience. That every time you make time for God, every time you spend time in His presence, that every time you open up your mouth and say, Lord, I bless you, Lord, I thank you, hallelujah, every time you spend time in His Word, every time you pray, every time you fast, every time you do anything of spiritual connection to the Most High God, you are in essence going up because worship is a going up experience. The songs of the ascent were sung as the Jews walked up these steps. And Psalm 120 was sung, In my distress, I cried to the Lord, and he heard me, and the worshippers, brothers and sisters, would take a step up. Then Psalm 121 was sung, I will lift my eyes to the hills, from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And then they would take another step up. Psalm 122 was sung. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And then they would take another step up. Psalm 123 was sung. Unto you I lift up my eyes. O you who dwell in the heavens. Another step up was made. Psalm 124 was sung. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not for the Lord on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. And another step up was made. Psalm 125, Psalm 126, 127, all the way up, brothers and sisters, to Psalm 134. 15 steps in total representing the song of the ascents into the very presence of Yahweh, their God. The psalms in this text with what I affectionately call a Q&A session at the onset of the text covering verses 1 and 2. He says, again, I will lift up my eyes. Pause. Now he swiftly moves to present us with this fascinating rhetorical question. And the question he poses is simply this. From whence does my help come? Verse 2 provides for us the striking and deliberate answer to this probing and provocative question that was raised in verse number 1. Verse 2 quickly uh, comes back and says, My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The psalmist sparks our interest by posing that question in verse number 1. And then he provides a wonderful response in verse number 2. My help comes from the Lord, Yahweh, the self-existing God. But the psalmist doesn't stop at Yahweh. He goes a bit further and he gives us another description of who God is. And that description points to the Hebrew term Elohim, which translates to our English term creator. Yeah. He essentially said Yahweh is Elohim because he made heaven and earth. And friends, that's my first preaching point right there. 
that ultimately the psalmist helps us to recognize and appreciate that my help comes from the Lord who is our creator. The psalmist identifies and makes clear that Yahweh is the one true God and that he is king of all creation. The psalmist also is helping each of us to refocus our vision. And I need you to hear me when I tell you. He wants us to recalibrate our vision. He wants us to reassociate what we look at. He says that you need to refocus your vision and take your eyes off your hell and start gazing and looking with focused intent on your help. Did y'all hear me? I said you need to take your eyes off the hell that you come up against on the job, in your family, with what you got to come up against in life. Take your eyes He 
our life. He's my creator, according to the text. We saw that in verses 1 and 2. He's our sustainer, according to the text. We see that in verses 3 and 4. But thirdly, in verses 5 and 6, my help comes from the Lord, who is our protector. He's our protector. Ladies and gentlemen, in order for you to really possess power and walk in your victory, your true victory, you have to know some things. You got to be acquainted with some information. You can't just assume or think. You have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you know, that you know that you know, that God is your keeper. Yeah. Now, 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 what's happening in the text is the psalmist is making an emphatic statement here. And regardless of what you may think, regardless of how you may feel, and regardless of what your problematic trouble may be telling you, you've got to embrace God's word and know for yourself that the Lord is your keeper. And here's what you have to tell yourself. You got to say, self, the devil can't destroy me because the Lord yeah, is my keeper. The enemy can't defeat me because the Lord is my keeper. The enemy of my soul cannot overwhelm me because Yahweh is my keeper. My Bible tells me that uh, the Lord
go to and as we go from. Even when we fly from city to city, and even when we go from country to country, the Father is with us and cares for our every need. Oh yeah. You see, brothers and sisters, God says, I will guide you with my counsel and afterward receive you to my glory. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. The psalmist concludes this phrase by mentioning in verses 7 and 8 that the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Yeah. Somebody ought to help me preach and say the Lord, Lord. will preserve you preserve. from all evil. All evil. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, he concludes with that wonderful phrase right there. And he shall preserve your soul. Yeah. Verse 8, the Lord shall preserve your going The Lord is your shade and your right hand. But as he transitions to verses 7 and 8, he now says, the Lord will. Yeah. Yeah. He graduates from showing us who the Lord is yeah. to what the Lord yeah. can do. Did y'all notice that? Yeah. Now see, if I had about 50 praisers in this virtual worship that could testify with me, and I made 51, that since the Lord showed me who he is, yeah. I tried him and found out Come in. Who is this king of love? The Lord. 